Here we're going to have a look at 2011, 2011, question 10, part A. Now, with these part A's, you have a choice of doing them either with constants or with limits. Now, in this example, I'm going to use constants. In the end of the day, you can use both. They both work quite well, and we can explore a bit the pros and cons of them. So, what have we got going on here first? We have x squared dy dx minus xy equals 7y. Okay, so when we're doing these questions, there's a few little things to remember. Step one is going to be it's going to be to arrange them. So we want something in terms of y dy equals something in terms of x dx. That's what we're going for here. So it just takes a little bit of algebra to tidy this up. Um, we'll start with just trying to get all these terms over on this side, all the y terms on one side. So we end up with x squared dy dx equals 7y plus xy. Okay, that's not so bad. And that, of course, equals y factor of 7 plus x. So now we can begin to split these things out. So we'll move this y across here and the x squared over here. So I end up with a 1 over y dy dx equals 7 plus x over x squared. Grand. Now we're going to bring this over here. I'm also going to tidy this one up a little bit because that's kind of messy to integrate. Well, actually, if I have 7 over x squared plus x over x squared, that's a little bit handier. All right. So I have 1 over y dy equals 7 over x squared plus, that's of course, 1 over x. If I split those out, dx. Okay. So now I have them in the right kind of form that I want. Step two is to integrate. Now, when we go to integrate these guys here, we are going to use constants this time around. So we can just pop that in there, integrate, integrate. And this is going to end up being, now, I'm actually going to break out over here for a second, because why are we using constants only on one side? Well, if I was to integrate that here, I will get ln y plus c, plus c1 equals minus 7 over x ln x plus c2. Okay, now it's worth getting to know your rules of integration and so on. In this case, remember the power of x is minus 2. That's why it works out like this. All right, now that's kind of annoying. I've got two different constants going on here. So really what would be easier would be to say ln y equals minus 7 over x and x, and we'll bring the constants together, c2 minus c1. Okay, so what I'm actually going to do, because they're just both constants, like 5 and 7 or something, minus 7 over x plus c. Okay, where c is c2 minus c1. And that's why we can just pull the constants out on one side. Now, if I'm going to diverge a little bit further, why do we have constants? What's this all about? Well, to give you an example, let's take a really simple equation here. Let's say dy dx equals 2. And what that's telling us is that the slope of the equation y, which is a function of x, is 2. So that means something like this. That's the y-axis and that's the x-axis. Slope equals 2. All right. But of course, there is multiple versions of lines for the slope equals 2. Same for all of these guys. Okay, if we go over and tidy this up, we end up with dy equals 2dx. Integrate both sides. We end up with y equals 2x plus c. All right, and that c is what allows us to move. It moves our curve up and down between these different, um, different positions, all with the same slope. You can see that's like your basic equation of a line. The stuff we're doing up here it's just more complicated curves. Okay, so now that we've got all that figured out, let's get back over here. Uh, that is, of course, what this looks like when it's integrated. L on y equals minus 7 over x. L on x plus c. Okay, good stuff. Now, step three is sub in the values to find c. 
All right, we are given various different values, and this question is x is one and y is one. So sub in. That's a specific point on our curve, so it has to solve for c. Well, this actually is fairly nice to put together, so we end up with ln of one equals minus seven over one plus ln of one plus c. Those two cancel, and we can see c is equal to seven. Okay, in next this case, it's actually quite easy. And in some of these simpler equations, using C is, is a bit easier than limits. Limits can be very good on a more complex question. I find limits are easier. Um, if you're not sure, I'll often go with limits myself. But in this case, it was dead easy to solve this one. So now we have our equation as L and Y equals minus 7 over X. So L and X plus seven. So that's what this looks like integrated. So finally, the last little bit is what this one is. Okay, we sub in to find the missing value. And in this case, it's going to be the value of y. All right, so we sub in x to find the value of y. Well, off the bottom of the page, we'll come back up here, just a little line to keep things tidy. Um, so we sub in sub in x equals, in this case, 2. All right, so ln y is minus 7 over 2, and then 2 plus 7, so that equals and then 2 plus 7 over 2, of course. Um, now, at this point, we need to solve for y. Okay, we're going to have to get going to end up in an exponential. So let's just actually put some numbers in this one. So ln2, if I was clever enough to brought my calculator with me, I would have that, but we can punch these in. I remember the numbers from earlier on. This here is going to end up equaling 4.19. Okay, so we then know that ln y is 4.19. So e, sorry, y equals e the power of 4.19 all right and that means y equals you got to put a bunch of numbers through on this one um, we'll just have a little look at that and that is going to be 66.23 okay and just that's really 4.931 do use a few extra decimals or even store it in your calculator to get it fully accurate all right but that is our full value of y